Now let's have a look at the various sections of the Mach reactor so that you may understand the working and the functionality of it uh, that much better. Now built into this entrance section, we have the first venturi, which I call actually the mixing nozzle. Um, and this is where we straighten up the flow. We speed up the slurry to about a medium veloci velocity. And then the slurry is then ushered in directly into this high speed venturi, which is uh, again the heart of the, of the Mach reactor, where we accelerate the slurry up to supersonic speeds. In this case, it will be a speed that is higher than the bubbly speed of, of sound, right? And this is what will then um, instigates the cavitation or it will start the cavitation process. After that high speed venturi section, we have the collection nozzle at the bottom, which is another uh, huge venturi. And, and here, the purpose of the collection nozzle is to slow down the flow. So from a very high speed, we go back to about a medium speed. We have a lot of mixing here from a plunging jet mechanism, which is the high speed jetting into the lower speed of the collection nozzle. So a lot of turbulence, a lot of mixing. And very importantly, together with that, there's vacuum or suction that is created. And this stainless steel ring main, which is the gas injection point, is um, located just on at the highest suction point on the reactor. So you will pull the gas in via the ring main into the reactor and get very, very efficient mixing of that uh, of the gas in the pulp. And also the other, uh, apart from the great mass transfer that you're gonna have uh, putting a gas into pulp, you can also use these ports for reagent addition. So we have modified this ring main for certain clients that have got a very specific need. And we're injecting gas into say three of the ports and we have one port left free where we can inject cyanide in there. That particular client is dosing cyanide in, but you could also dose any other reagent like a flotation reagent or a cyanide destruction reagent and you'll get the maximum use out of the, the reagent. Because of the mixing and the uh, that cavitation environment, you're gonna get the most out of the reagent and the highest efficiency out of the, out of the process. I think let's drill down into what's happening with the Venturi because that is, that is actually where I can say, as I said, the heart of the, of the unit, but that's where all the action happens. So without this high-speed Venturi, the Mach reactor would not be a Mach. Uh, it would just be a, a static mixer, I suppose. Um, and so this process of cavitation or this principle of cavitation that the Mach is based on, it's all about slurry speed or slurry velocity. And, and that's also where the name of the reactor comes from. Uh, Mach uh, 1 being the speed of sound, right? And we we in excess of the speed of sound in this unit. But what happens there when slurry is accelerated to a speed higher than, um, uh, let's just say higher than the speed of sound, say Mach 2 through this unit, what we're going to have is a situation where the instantaneous pressure in the venturi, in the throat of that venturi, is going to drop down to below water vapor pressure. And that is a critical moment, or it's a critical point in this process, because the minute that happens, we start this process called cold boiling, where there's cavities that will start to form in the slurry. And these cavities will nucleate or they'll seed on hydrophobic particles in the pulp. And as luck would have it, the hydrophobic particles in the pulp, that's the mineral that we're targeting. That would be your gold particles or your platinum or copper, or whatever it is you're trying to extract. And, and so these, these cavities will form on those very particles. Uh, in the case of flotation, uh, a, a very fine mineral, where um, it's very difficult for a fine mineral, mineral to attach onto a bubble in the first place. That's why it's generally lost out to tailings. Uh, and what happens in the mach is you have a situation where particles are giving birth to bubbles. So we're not trying to create bubbles on the one side and have particles on the other and mix them all together and hope they attach. We're actually starting out by attaching that bubble to the particle. So there's almost like a 100% guarantee that you will float the fine particle. And that's the, that's the leverage we have on flotation. That's where we bring uh, the Mach advantage to the process. And in leaching uh, 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 situations where we're injecting oxygen into the ring main, the oxygen gas ventilates these voids that are forming. 
And as the, uh, those cavities move down, for example, to the collection no nozzle at the bottom where the speed slows down, they'll collapse, so they'll implode um, at temperatures of around 5,500 degrees Celsius. That's as hot as the center of the sun. And um, so they will, the water jet that splits those bubbles will actually hit a particle at a pressure of about a thousand atmospheres. So that's, that's extreme. And actually, once you know you can get that in a bar and get that level of aggression in this reactor, I don't know why you would settle for, for anything else to be, uh, yeah, to be frank.